is London an expensive place to visit? Yes, it is. But if you know where to look, there are free activities everywhere. And today I'm going to talk you through 50 of them. So get ready because we're getting started right now. For a great introduction to the capital, start with a South Bank walk along the River Thames. It starts right opposite the historic Tower of London and takes you all the way to the London Eye and Houses of Parliament. And that's our second location. You can admire the Big Ben Clock Tower from the outside, but if you're a UK resident, you can also enter the Palace of Westminster for free. All you have to do is contact your local MP's office. They have limited numbers of free tickets for constituents. Next up, we have Tower Bridge. You currently need to pay £10.60 to go inside it, but crossing it is free and it's arguably even more beautiful from the outside. If you're interested you can look up the times when the bridge opens which is absolutely fascinating and then go watch it then. Nearby you will find Sky Garden. It's hard to believe but this lush tropical rooftop garden is completely free. All you have to do is book your tickets in advance because spaces are limited. Number five is as British as it gets. It's the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace where the Queen resides. It takes place on certain days from 10 45 a.m. and lasts about 45 minutes. Our next category is parks. Did you know that London is the world's first national park city? Besides 8.9 million people, it's also home to 8.3 million trees and 14,000 different species of wildlife. Hyde Park is London's most famous green space. Don't miss Speaker's Corner, the beautiful Rose Garden in the summer, and Serpentine Lake. You can even go swimming in there, but the annual membership costs £20. Right next to Hyde Park, you will find Kensington Gardens, the setting of one of Jane Barry's Peter Pan books, and home to the famous Albert Memorial. Richmond Park is very different to these two. It's a national nature reserve far from the busy city centre, and it's full of deer. And then there's Horniman Gardens. They're not widely known, even within London, but I think they're well worth a visit. You get great views of the London skyline, and there are alpacas. They also have 16 acres of gardens, a library, and a museum, but mostly, yep, yeah, alpacas. If you're interested in learning more about London and my life here, I have been in the UK on and off for 10 years now, and I share loads of that content on my channel, so don't forget to, yes. Our next category is markets. Food, furniture, flowers, the whole shebang. Portobello Road Market is one of my favorites, located in the colorful neighborhood of Notting Hill, where you'll also find the annual Notting Hill Carnival put on by the local Caribbean community. But if you're hungry, I'd recommend the nearby Ackland Food Market, where you can get some really great international grub. My favorite are the Arepas. Bar Market is probably the most famous food market in the capital. It's very central, just a short walk away from London Bridge and the Shard. There's been a market in this spot since at least the 12th century, making it one of London's oldest as well as biggest. But it doesn't have to be all about food. Columbia Road Flower Market is a great spot for fresh flowers, succulents, and just a bit of photography. It's only open on Sundays, so bear that in mind and get there as early as possible to avoid the crowds. If, like me, you love Harry Potter, Leadenhall Market might seem a little familiar. It was used as a filming location in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Look at it! The new Nimbus 2000! Camden Market has a little bit of everything. Art, music, vintage fashion, and of course, some great food. I have a bit of a soft spot for it because I used to live nearby and it's right on Regent's Canal and in my opinion you just can't beat being right next to the water. While you're there, check out a shop called Cyberdog. I don't want to give anything away, I'll just tell you now that it's pretty crazy. <laughs> and finally, there is Brick Lane. The best day to visit is Sunday when the whole street turns into an open air market. But Brick Lane is well worth visiting any day of the week. It's the center of East London's Bangladeshi community, so you'll find loads of curry houses and sweet shops. Even the street names are written in Bengali and some people refer to the area as Bangladesh. Next up, we've got street art. Just two entries here, but both are well worth your time. The first is Shoreditch, a trendy neighborhood full of beautiful murals, and it's right next to Brick Lane, so no excuse for not visiting. And second, we've got the Leak Street Arches in Waterloo. It's basically a 300 meter graffiti covered tunnel and the city's largest legal wall. The art is constantly changing, so it's a place you can keep visiting over and over without ever getting bored. So that was street art. Now let's move on to more traditional art and museums. The British Museum is a great place to start. Although be careful, you could literally spend weeks here. The museum is all about human history and culture with a permanent collection of some 8 million works, making it one of the largest museums in the world. The British Museum is actually the UK's most visited attraction. It had some 6 million visitors in 2019 alone. It was closely followed by Tate Modern, our next entry. Many of London's best museums are completely free and the Tate Modern is no exception. 
It focuses on modern art and it's a very short walk away from Shakespeare's famous Globe Theatre, although that one is not free. If you love the outdoors, you might enjoy the Natural History Museum. It has five incredible collections, but my favourite part is the skeleton of a female blue whale called Hope that is displayed in the main hall. Right next door to the Natural History Museum, you'll find the Victoria and Albert Museum, more commonly known as the V&A. There you'll find ceramics, jewellery, sculptures, and lots of other design elements from different eras. The second is the Science Museum. It has loads of interactive exhibits, as well as the oldest surviving steam locomotive, the first jet engine, and the Apollo 10 command module. Our next category is shopping, and there is no place more famous for it than Oxford Street. I'll be honest, not many locals love shopping there because it's normally rammed with visitors, but if this is your first time in London, it would be rude not to go. Right next to Oxford Street, you will find Regent Street. Again, it's a busy shopping destination and you can probably tell I don't love shopping, but even I like coming here around Christmas time, specifically to go to Hamley's, which is the largest and oldest toy shop in the world. If you wanna do a bit of luxurious window shopping, definitely visit Harrods. It's a very, very fancy department store in Knightsbridge, and that's one of the most expensive areas of London. And it's especially popular among rich visitors from the Gulf region. Fun fact, Harrods is now actually owned by the state of Qatar. Selfridges is another fancy department store and the second largest shop in the UK right after Harrods. The last luxury department store on our list is Liberty. I've never bought anything there, but I do like visiting because it's in the West End, which is an area known for its culture and theatres, and Liberty has a beautiful mock Tudor facade and the interior design is on point. If you want to browse somewhere more affordable, I recommend One New Change. Not only does it have high street fashion shops like H&M and Zara, it also offers an incredible view of St. Paul's from the rooftop, and yes, that's completely free. Carnaby Street is a pedestrianized shopping street in Soho, which is known for its independent fashion boutiques and quirky floating decorations, especially around Christmas. Right next to it, you'll find Kingly Court, a three-story alfresco dining spot with restaurants from all over the world. And finally, there's Neil's Yard. It's a small, colorful courtyard with lots of independent shops and restaurants. This one would be my recommendation because it's one of those hidden gems that you're gonna remember for a long time. All right, let's move on to London's most famous squares. Some European cities have a central square, but London isn't really like that. But if I had to pick one, I'd say Trafalgar Square with the famous National Portrait Gallery, which is also free. Other famous squares include Covent Garden, which easily could have been in the shopping section. It's definitely one of the best spots for retail therapy in all of London. But it also has incredible restaurants, theatres, and possibly most importantly, really, really good buskers. Leicester Square, and yes, that's how it's pronounced, is one I personally avoid. I don't really like it, I don't get the appeal, but visitors do seem to enjoy it, so go give it a try. But if I can, I would like to sway you to go to nearby Chinatown instead. You'll find lots of authentic Chinese restaurants, mainly from the Cantonese part of the country, but some great Beijing and Uyghur spots as well. I also like the ornate Qing Dynasty gates that really make you feel like you're in China. A short walk away, you'll find Piccadilly Circus, which is basically the London equivalent of Times Square. It has giant advertising screens as well as the famous statue of Eros, which has become a popular meeting spot. Alright, let's get into some London history now. Did you know that London has Roman walls that date back to 200 AD? You can find them directly to the north of the Tower of London and you can access them completely for free. Near London Wall, you'll find St. Dunstan in the east, a serene oasis in the heart of the city. It used to be a bit of a hidden gem, but has gotten pretty popular in the last few years because of Instagram, and I'm sure you can see why. Next, we've got St. Paul's Cathedral, which is one of the most recognizable buildings in the city and my personal favorite. Entry costs about 17 pounds unless you go to worship there on Sundays, which is free. You can do the same with Westminster Abbey, which has hosted 16 royal weddings, including Prince William and Kate's. Also, more than 3,000 people are buried in there, which is a bit spooky for a wedding, but there you go. And that brings me back to the final location in this category, which is Highgate Cemetery. Approximately 170,000 people are buried there, including the singer George Michael, writer Douglas Adams, who wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and German political theorist Karl Marx. Okay, now let's talk about views. London has so many of those bus tour companies that take you around them, but there is a workaround if you're on a budget. I know it's not free, but for £1.50, you can hop on the 24 bus from Westminster to Hampstead Heath and enjoy some really incredible views of central London from the top floor. Speaking of Hampstead Heath, it's home to Parliament Hill, which has incredible views of the London skyline. 
It's also generally a great place to visit with a huge park and some wild swimming spots, which is pretty cool. Nearby Primrose Hill has some incredible views as well and it's a great spot for a picnic. And if the weather turns, don't worry, there are so many bars and restaurants that you can hide inside just around the corner. And finally, there is Greenwich. You can get a really unique perspective of central London from the top of Greenwich Park. And there's a lot to see here in general. The National Maritime Museum, the Royal Observatory's Astronomy Center, or the Queen's House. And yes, they are all free to visit. Our final category is pop culture. London obviously has tons of film and literally locations, but I'm just going to mention three here. The first of them is Abbey Road, which is popularized by the Beatles and their famous album cover, of course. Next, we've got 221B Baker Street, the London address of fictional detective Sherlock Holmes. And finally, our last entry on this long, long list, Platform 9 and 3 quarters at King's Cross. If you know which film this is a reference to, you should go ahead and subscribe because I think we'll be great friends. Thank you for watching. This was a long list. I appreciate you sticking around and I'll see you next Friday for another video. And do let me know which of these locations is your favorite. Bye.